let's work through some example problems for vertical analysis. So first of all, vertical analysis for an income statement. We're told Loveland Company reported the following in 2019. We have net sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit, operating expenses, and net income data. And we need to prepare a vertical analysis of this income statement data. So when you're doing vertical analysis on the income statement, it's each individual line item divided by net sales. So for net sales, it's just 1 million divided by itself. So the vertical analysis, we would show that as 100%. Now cost of goods sold, that's 720,000 divided by our net sales amount of 1 million, or 72%. Gross profit, 280,000 divided by our net sales amount of 1 million, to get 28%. Operating expenses of 170,000. Well, we want to divide that by net sales and we get 17%. Then net income, 110,000 divided by net sales of a million to get 11%. Now we can take a look at these numbers and see that our gross profit is 28% of our net sales. Our net income is 11% of our net sales. So that's how we're going to use these numbers. Just remember that for vertical analysis of an income statement, it's each individual item divided by your net sales amount. Now we can take a look at a balance sheet. So we have some balance sheet information over on the left. And then it tells us Rojas Corporation reported the following balance sheet on December 31st, 2019. Prepare a vertical analysis on the balance sheet data. Well, when we're doing vertical analysis on a balance sheet, it's each individual item divided by total assets. So total assets sort of takes the place of net sales, um, as we did in the previous example. So for cash, we take the cash amount of 14,000, divide that by our total assets of 149,500, and cash is 9.4% of our total assets. Accounts receivable, we take 12,000 divided by our total assets, we get 8%. Inventory, 8,500 divided by our total assets, we get 5.7%. Land, 70,000 divided by total assets, it's 46.8%. Equipment, 45,000 divided by your total assets is 30.1%. And then our total assets are 100% of themselves. So if you add up each individual percentage for each asset account, those five percentages will add up to 100%. Now, we continue on with accounts payable. So we take accounts payable of 45,000 divided by our total assets, and it's 30.1%. Bonds payable, 60,000 divided by our total assets is 40.1%. And then owner's capital divided by total assets is 29.8%. Total liabilities and owner's equity divided by total assets. Well, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity, so that's going to be 